Hi, in this video I'm going to discuss race reading. Now, it sounds more complicated than it is. Um, you will hear a lot of people saying how difficult this is, but for me it's a pretty simple equation when it comes to finding out the reason a horse won a race without uh, speed figures, sectional times, uh, things like that. It's called efficiency. Now what I mean by efficiency is efficiency of the horse ridden by the jockey to achieve the best possible place it could. Now I'm going to show you an example, uh, the 315 at Ripon, which was the Great St Wilfred uh, on Sunday. So we shall load this up. And I'm just going to start off, start off. So I'm just going to pause it here. Uh, we'll go big screen so we can see a better angle. So I'm going to point it to two horses. So in tool stall 17, uh, we had the winner of the race, Staxton. In stall 18, it's a compatriot, same stable, and a horse I actually tipped on my ITV racing. Now, obviously they're close together, and we shall start things off. So we come out, they both sort of break evenly. This one's being held up because you can see the jockey sort of pulling on the reins just there. This jockey's pushing forward, obviously, you can see by the arms out to the side. So intention was pretty obvious from there, but we shall run it on. So they're both more or less the same part of the track. This grey one sort of coming across a bit, so this one here gets squeezed out a little bit. So we shall run it on, get a better view, run it on right. So on soft ground, it's been my experience um, that being against a rail is a big advantage. The simple fact that water will tend to congregate uh, in dips, hollows. So the ground will tend to be a lot softer in this sort of area. Uh, the drainage tends to be pretty good down these sides, as you can see by sort of ridge there it looks a bit drier so we shall carry on so Staxton the winner of the race is one two three off the rail my selection on the rail run it forward I'm disregarding these over here so we'll run it forward run it forward and the jockey just had a quick look there to see where the others were and he's come across this rail. We've gone about a furlong, to a fur, furlong half. So my selection's there, the winner of the race is here. So both got reasonable positions and there we go. The winner of the race has bagged that rail. He's in control of that area. So this one's uh, still leading, but he's three, four horse widths off that rail. We'll run it on again. My selection, still on the rail, decent position. But as you can see, he moves off the rail. There's a big gap there. Why not stay there? It's obviously the best ground, you know that from previous results. But no, we decide to go over there. I'll run it on again. And then we're coming to the area that I call crazy jockeys. Because from going in formation, you know, sort of three, four wide, when it comes to the final two furlongs, we have crazy jockey syndrome. And I shall show you what I mean by this uh, in a furlong or so more. So we'll carry on again. The winner is still on that rail. 
my selection is sort of wandering around doesn't really know where to go oh no there's a lot of horses in front of me uh, so I'm now four wide I could have been here could have been following this this one here yeah so we shall run it on again Winner star that rail. We're not bothered about this. These selections. I'll wait till it comes back, and then we shall just pause it again. My selection has sort of moved four or five off the rail by this time. The winner star that rail. I could have been here. My selection could have been here. Just following that. So now we're coming into. Crazy Jockey Syndrome. As you can see, they've all started to fan out. Now, I get the fact that obviously they want to win the race, they want to get a clear shot at things, but this is not efficient riding. You are giving up track position. So we shall run it on again and you'll see a perfect illustration. So we're just inside the final furlong there. We'll just run it on a little bit more. And you can see this one here near a rail. All the rest in the middle. And we go out in an arc. When we come back round as you get nearer the rail, the winner is there. My selection has decided to come back on the rail, having been out here. And we shall run it on again. So he's wondered about the track. Again, all these jockeys giving their horse no chance at all because they've just given up track position. So here we go, we're running up to the line. My selection has come back near the rail, having been out here, and he's finishing the race off. You know, he's probably about three, three and a half lengths behind the winner. Go up to the, go up to the line, and there we go. So, the winner was given the most efficient ride. No doubt about it. You don't need any sectional timings or speed figures to tell you that. He came out in a straight line, held his position, got on that favoured rail, won the race by a length. Well, three quarters of a length. My selection wandered about three, four, five off the rail, back to the rail, Probably being about four lengths. These ones here, this one beaten just over a length, this one half a length. So the winner was given the most efficient ride, no doubt about it. So that's why Staxton won that race. Now, the next race I'm going to show you is from Saturday or is it Friday might be Friday <laughs> at Lingfield now this 425 I shall put it in full mode again and this is the horse I want you to concentrate on uh, it's the second favorite ridden by Jamie Spencer so we shall run it on. So mad dash for the the position, everything coming out, jockeys forcing the pace, arms down here. Jamie Spencer, if you can just make out there, hands up, he's getting a position on the track. So if you look at it, all the rest, lasting away, lasting away. These just staying out wide for some reason these pushing forward jockeys looking around jamie spencer gets a position he's dropped in behind these rivals so there we go these still out here for some reason no position at all these pressing forward so these jockeys are not giving efficient rides to their horses from the very beginning. Simple as. So we shall stay on. Jamie Spencer, nice position 
on the rail. That's that. Oh, he's pushing along. It's a green horse. He only had three starts. But he's got it in a good position. He's giving in the horse an efficient ride. Keep it going. Again, saving ground. He's out wide. He's out wide. Still saving ground. So all these jockeys that were out wide with no position, still out wide. So we've got like we've gone into the old formation of two by two. It's mid race. Jockeys are content with their position. So we're doing the two by two. Standard formation. Jamie Spencer is four back on the rail. Just keep it going. Still two by two. And then watch as we come to the final couple of furlongs what happens. Jamie Spencer you know, pushing away, still on a green horse. And then we get to see Mad Jockey Syndrome. Again, we're coming out wide. Three wide there. Jamie Spencer still getting a good position. So, still getting a case manoeuvred now off the rail. As we all know, the rail at Lingfield is not some place you want to be. And all jockeys should know about that, that by now. Uh, it's been going on for donkey's years. So we shall run it on again. And I believe this is the favourite. Um, it was beaten. So we're coming to the final turn. We're starting to fan out. All these jockeys that got no position at all early doors are all at the back. And we shall run it on again. Favourite seems to be going well. Jamie Spencer's pushing along on that horse and he swings wide into the bend. Now, I will say you're not saving ground, but you probably come in five, six wide. But at Lingfield, we know that this in the home straight is not some place you want to be at all. So he comes wide. He Jockey's the favourite there, uh, making sure he's not getting a, much of a run. Uh, but I think he got it covered anyway, to be fair. So he's still pushing away. Guess about the favourite. Comes to take the leader. And wind's going away, lots of distance between first, second and third. A lovely, efficient ride. Got an early position out the stalls. Got position mid-race. Got position in the final part of the race. So a, a really good example of an efficient winning ride by a jockey. Now, the next race I'm going to show you is from Thursday at Bath. And <clears throat> it's the final race at 8 o'clock. I should just stick that on. Full. So, two horses I want to clear, get that on a bit, so clear it up a bit. Oh, still not there. So, this is the winner. And this is the other horse I want you to concentrate on. Now, this horse was actually going up in trip. And while in its form it has been held up, uh, it has also made the run in that game. So, it seems a pretty versatile horse. But as the old... An infuriating uh, thing that usually happens when horses go up and trip. 
the jockey decides to hold them up. Now, anybody with a bit of, you know, any sort of grasp on reality would think that holding holding a horse up going up in trip is not going to make it get that trip any easier than being up in the front. You know, you're still going to cover the same distance. Uh, if the horses are going a reasonable pace, not going mad up front, you know, you are going to be at a disadvantage giving away lengths at the start because you're going up in trip. It's so infuriating, it happens time after time. I don't know why jockeys do it. Um, it's a mystery. So we'll go back to this. So we'll just come out of stalls. The winner of the race, you know, he's pushing along nicely. He's got a nice position. And this one is three lengths back, so we shall run it on. So we're running along, we're running along. This one, you know, it's getting a nice, easy time. Not really, the arms aren't really pushing along. This one has decided to drop in, so we're now four lengths back. Again, we're running on, coming up to the winning post first time around, and see how much of a gap there is between that one and that one you're probably talking six seven lengths so remember that uh, figure six seven lengths when we get to the end of the race so you know this one's not doing anything you know he's not horse isn't, isn't running freely or going mad uh, and we're going to drop into the standard two by two formation as we can see Standard two by two. But as we come across the road crossing, this gap has increased. Now, you may ask, why are you this far back? You're not achieving anything. You could have been here, getting a bit of cover. You know, you're still going the same speed as you are there. Question to ask. So we will run it on. Again, the win of the race, nice track position. So we're still six lengths gap to that one. So we shall run it on. Nothing much changes. The gap sort of stays the same. But here, he tries moving up on the inside, which is, you know, you're going the shortest way, makes sense. Uh, the winner has got track position. He's out in the lead by a length or so on that rail. So we shall run it on again. Again, all going nice and steady. One's a bit free. But everything's in a nice rhythm. Mid race. Again, still the same gap. Five, six lengths. And carry on. Two by two again. Still, the guy here he's not doing anything with his arms, he's not pushing. These guys are a little, you can see, pushing this one. He's starting to try and get a position on the rail, but obviously, this one's in front of him, it's, it's looking a bit more difficult. So, we're going around to the home bend. So, this one, this one are the two going the same. But there's still a four length gap. Now we come to the four furlong marker. Again, everything's starting to be pushed along. These are starting to push along. Let's start to push along. The winner, great track position. Arms of the jockey still relaxed. And you'll see that the jockey on this one is starting to get a bit worried 
because he can see the gap has grown again from five to six to probably near seven lens but he's still going easy enough now he's got these in front of him so he's going to have to come around them so here we go the winner still on that nice rail jockey on this one start to push along the winner start to push along well we're starting to fan out a bit as you can see these jockeys trying to get a clean run at things the jockey on this one He's just going to get the whip out. As you can see, the winner's already had a had a tap with the whip. Jockey's in full flight, crouched position. Jockey on this one isn't. So this this crouched position is a good indicator that that the horse is at full flight. So jockey's aerodynamically behind the horse. Good position. Again here, here, but the winner on there, the runner, rider on this, sorry, is just trying to manoeuvre a position. So here we go, coming straight, he's come from, this one has come from there to here, and the winner is still in the same position. So now we get the whip out, so this one went for the whip later than the winner which again can be a, another sign that horse is going well jockeys won't tend to use whips without uh, need contrary to what some people may think uh, so she'll run it on again again this one you know has been really hard ridden now but it's coming with a run the winner however nice easy time nice efficient ride on the inside this one, you know, he's gaining ground. He's probably four, five, four and a half lengths behind, maybe at this point. So we run it on. Nice, efficient ride from the winner. And this one is gaining. So we're now probably down to about three and a half, four lengths. And we run it on. So he really knows he's not going to win the race, so he's not hard ridden the horse isn't so and the winner again has realized that he's got that in the bag too so we shall stop it there so as you can see he probably won by about two and a half three lengths but if you remember at the very beginning this one had six seven gave away six seven lengths by a track position at the very start so if it had been three four lengths nearer you probably might have won but the rider on this horse fantastic efficiency ride great example that's the reason why he won the race this horse not so great typical held up when going up in distance after that's the jockeys union and why they do that but Again, very simple explanation of of why a horse won a race without the need to relate to speed figures and time forms and things like that. So, and you could probably mark up this this runner too as one if it was given a better ride uh, that could be ready to win one in the near future. So, I hope that. Uh, helped you out and you found that pretty interesting i say race reading is simple you know you can see the reason why horses run a race won a race and you can find reasons why a horse didn't win a race uh, you don't need any figures to tell you that you can use your own eyes and efficiency of ride is something that wins races more often than not it's a simple fact and one that you know you you should look out for you know some of the jockeys you know have more intelligence than others shall we say and you know they 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 try and achieve uh, the best ride they can uh, without 
going into mad jockey mode as we've seen before uh, this happens quite regular by the way if you watch any race they'll just all fan out and just lose all sense of where they are on the track uh, but the best jockeys you know will tend to tend not to do that and you know it's something you can look at yourself just watch plenty of replays on horse racing and you will soon work out you know the best efficient rides and the worst efficient rides and I hope you found that very interesting and something you can refer back to in time. Thanks for watching.